Crystal, nice meeting you and thank yeah. you for uh, inviting me to your school mm -hmm. and share with us, you know, how did your teachers and principals selected you to be on our cover page for the mm -hmm. Mount Pleasant High. Yeah. Okay. So the question I want to really ask you is, uh, can you tell the reader what was the incident happened to happen in your life that you would like to share with the readers? And what are the things you should watch out when you growing up? All right, well, um, growing up for me was, was quite hard. I mean, just like anybody else in this world, but you know, my mom, she was a, she's a single mother of three boys and I'm the oldest of those three boys. So, you know, being a single mother um, and me being the oldest, I knew that I had to take, you know, that leadership role, that role that I had to do something about it and I had to help. So throughout the process, you know, I always ask myself, how can a leader become a leader without being leader? You know, so I always look for people to look up to, people that I can, I can just see them as figures, as father figures. And, you know, by the age that I was five years old, I found God in my life. Spiritually, I found Him as the most influential and, you know, very, someone that I can lean on. You know, and God has always been that for me. And I know that because of Him, um, I'm able to go throughout this world. You know, and to this day, I can say that, you know, every single step that I've taken to be who I want to be has been a step of faith by God, you know, because he put people in my life, uh, such as Mr. Lovato, um, to lead me that way. And, uh, yeah, that's, honestly, that's, that's really hard to wrap your mind around, but that's true. <laughs> so... Wait, let, let me understand that. So this is all happened because you believe in the God and where you were in the life with your mom and mom, your mom is a single parent. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is, what is the one thing you did that anyone can do to achieve what you have? What is that one thing? Um, one thing that I, can, that I can say that I did to achieve what I have now um, which is my love for poetry, is to speak out, you know, to just say something, you know, because you can't just sit around and wait for someone to say something, or you can't sit around and just have it in your mind. You know, you have to do it. You know, and uh, actually, Mr. Iwato uh, reached out to me a while ago, and he was telling me, um, he was, I was writing a poem for a spoken word competition, uh, since which I was writing contest, and he said, to me, get involved and create the change that you want to see. You know, and that hit me hard because I realized that, you know, this is what a lot of people have to realize, that in order for you to do something in life, you need to get involved and you need to make the change that you want to see. That, that's really true. Mm -hmm. Who was the most influential person in your life besides your parents? Um, besides my parents, um, I would have to say God. God is is the most influential person in my life. You know, uh, growing up, I didn't have a dad. So when I found God, I realized that he was my father. You know, and throughout every single step that I've taken was because of God, was because he helped me. And um, I see him as the most influential person because I have this personal connection with him, personal connection that I know no one could ever get between. So I'm free to say that, you know, I love God and I love him because he loved me first. Okay. Was there a teacher that inspired you in the classroom? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And how? Um, well, my freshman year, um, I remember walking into my English classroom and uh, at the time I had a teacher, her name was Ms. Topete, um, Raquel Topete. And she pointed out to me, she said, do you want to be in the spoken word competition for uh, Mount Pleasant? And at first I was like, I never written a poem before, I never written, you know, I never rhymed two words together at all. And she was like, come on, I believe you can. But I, I refused. The next day I walk into class, and next thing you know, there's like, you know, there's a list, and my name is like on top. And it's right under that Mount Pleasant 
um, high school contestant. And before I could even say anything, she turned around and she said, I believe that you have the potential. To I believe that there's something in you that you need to let the world know. And when she told me this, I, it stirred something in me to believe in myself as well, that I can write a poem, you know. So I had a whole month, and I ended up writing a poem. I was the only freshman that competed that year, and I was scared because there was a lot of contestants. And thanks to God's will, I ended up placing first. You know, and in that moment when I realized that people were actually taking the time to listen to what I believe and what I say, it made me realize that, you know, this was my thing. This is what I can do to be a voice, not only for me, but for my community. How your friends react to your accomplishment and how it has challenged you? You know, you went to New York. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So, I mean, not too many people can say that, that they went to New York just because they did something in the school, right? Yeah, true that. True so that. tell me. Uh, well, when, uh, when I gave the news to most of my friends that I was going to New York City, you know, most of them were, you know, a little jealous, you know, because who doesn't want to go to New York City? You know, and for me, that's always been one of my biggest dreams to go to um, New York and explore it in a way. And I thought I would be doing that when I was like, you know, 25, when I'd actually have the money for it, you know. But, you know, one day Mr. Lovato reached out to me and he said, hey, uh, would you like to go to New York City? And I was like, of course, you know, who doesn't? And um, it was quite, quite cool um, explaining it. I mean, quite cool, the whole process of everything. I gotta say that was my first time on a plane First time being so far away from home, you know, and it, it was just an amazing experience. And when I came back, my friends, they were so proud of me, you know, because they, they, they felt, you know, passionate and they felt like they could actually, if I could do it, they can do it, you know. And I'm, I'm glad that that happened because they, I'm glad that I inspired them, not only because of my trip, you know, but because I'm helping people to get it to where they want to be, and I'm putting that little seed of inspiration so they can grow in it. Wow, that's a, that's a really good seed. <laughs> what do you like to do when you're not in school, uh, you know, do you have any activities or uh, oh, yeah. things I mean, you do? Um, besides, you know, doing homework and keeping my grades up and whatnot, um, I think one of the biggest things that I love to do is go out, and um, by out I mean going to like hiking and, and being in the midst of nature because uh, you know the Bible says that man was created from dirt so I believe that when you are alone in a nature area you can see the beautiful things that God has created and it allows me to connect more with God you know it allows me to become more and more connected with God because he he created everything around us so that's that's one of the biggest things I like to do and that's where my poetry comes from honestly. God comes from my poetry. So I try my best to spend most of my time um, with God, whether it is through going outside, um, through either playing an instrument, I, I like to play piano. So you know, when it comes to playing piano, it's it's an art, just like poetry, just like anything that you do. It's an art. Is there some poet that you would like to share with the Some poet? Yeah. Uh, I mean some poem. Oh, some poem. Oh, some poem. Um, well, poem that I first wrote. You know, that that's that's one of the biggest poems. Can, can you yeah. Yeah, tell us a few words in there? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can recite the whole thing for you. Um, so this poem actually, it I wrote. It was my first poem that I wrote because of Mr. Pete, and um, I didn't know what to write about. You know, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna ask my friends. Let me see what their problems are. What's one of the biggest problems? And a lot of my friends said that. You know, they struggled with being um, lonely at home, so they would do drugs, they would they would find another way to, you know, fill that void. So I realized that out of all this, the biggest problem was that they were lonely. And with me, I struggled with loneliness a lot because, you know, I never had a dad. And I couldn't tell stuff to my mom that guys would tell their dads. You know, it's just a guy to guy thing. So. I wrote a poem on loneliness, and it's called Away. And it goes like this. <clears throat> Do you know those problems that everybody talks about, including drugs, sex, and mostly alcohol? 
I've seen many people trying to fight those things on their own. When they see no, they be all up in the corner getting stoned. Addictions are very hard to let go. Because when you put them aside, they start to lurk back very, very slow. That's why most of our lives have been just like a wheel. Spinning and turning, but barely getting healed. We be looking for answers in all the wrong places. Getting in games and even messing with other faces. It's kind of sad that we try to survive life alone. We seem like stray dogs chewing on a broken bone. It's even sadder when help comes and knocks on the doors. Cause we ain't a ride away to look up and say, I'm not home. All we know how to do is reject others. When in reality, we're supposed to be there for one another. Just like the good book says, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. That's Proverbs 27, 17, my brothers. We're like a family, united as one. Cause when one falls, we all fall. You see, still united as one. The problem here is simply just clear that most of us youth fall into this tremendous fear. Fear of not having anyone present. It's like Christmas coming without receiving any presents. It's an extraordinary feeling that is so ugly, I call it disgust. But see, this is where love comes in and becomes a must. When we fall, when we fail, and when we know we can't prevail, we know one thing, that the greatest being that ever walked this earth came to set us out of jail. And this is why I speak with a purpose. Because he not only set me free, but he also gave me a purpose. To reach a generation that has been lost and has been broken. It's like me being the dealer. You're the player. Here's a free token. Just know that this token's not like any other that you'll find. It's for you to open your eyes and stop acting blind. It's for you to see that you can still be happy without materialized things that might seem great at first, but actually in a pretty crappy. Is everlasting love? Well, that's the greatest thing he has to offer. Kind of hard to explain, but I would say it's more like having a bucket of gold instead of some old lousy copper. Now, before I finish, I got one thing left to say. That there's still one love, one God, and only one way. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, sharing with us. Of course. Of course. Okay. You know. So, thanks. All right. Thank you.